Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic. This is a show where we answer all of your tech-related questions that you've been leaving down in that comment section below using the hashtag AskGCNTech. Now, we are going to do our very best to answer all of your tech questions, but if we did miss one this week that you have left under last week's show, make sure you leave it again mm. and try to answer it next week. Right. First up this week into it. is from Gems and Hidden History, as they say, on the new road bike, I'm getting a very frustrating chain vibration when the chain is on the small rear cogs and the small front chain ring. The chain vibrates on the top section as it travels from the sprockets at the back to the front chain ring. It's a resonant frequency when I get between a cadence of 80 to 85 RPM and then it settles down about 90 RPM. Tightened up the B-limit screw, replaced the derailleur, replaced the rear cassette, really with the chain. Any idea what is causing this? Yes, I do. Just don't I'm, ride in that gear. Yeah. <laughs> you basically summed it up straight away. Um, I think a large proportion of it is the fact that you're in that gear. It's cross-chaining. It's almost as bad as cross-chaining in terms of using the big chain ring and the big sprocket at the back. And using the smallest sprocket and that small um, chain ring on the front is causing the chain links to like articulate loads around the sprocket. And that's what's causing the vibration as it's like lifting off of the teeth each time. I would basically just try and avoid using that gear. There mm -hmm. is of course the other obvious things to check like that the limit screws are set correctly and the chains are the correct length. But it sounds like you've covered a lot of that stuff. Yeah. So it's really like best practice to avoid that gear. Mm. There you go. Right, next question is in from David Overfield. Just got a bike fit and was told there were two things I need to get sooner than later. New pedals with longer spindle, uh, 59 millimeter, and shorter crank arms. After already getting a new bike, both of, of these seem pretty costly if you consider power meters and the new 105 DI2. What path would you suggest first? Do you want to go first? Um, well, I think it's important just to get the bike to fit you properly first. Um, but after that, well, it's hard. It's hard if the bike fitter has told you this is definitely what you need. But you don't have to go and buy brand new things. Mm. You could opt for I don't know secondhand cranks. Um, you could opt for maybe if you did want a power meter, you could get power meter pedals. That kind of kills two birds with one stone. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything else. Yeah, that I you think suggest. that's a, that's a good suggestion actually. So. I completely agree with you. Basically, get the bike to fit first before spending money on upgrades. Yes, it's nice to have a power meter, but it's no good having a power meter if your bike doesn't fit you and you end up with sore knees or whatever. Yeah. Um, in terms of the pedal axles, instead of having to buy new pedals, there are some um, adapter kits which will either have a different axle for your pedal or you can have spacers and Bits that will space yeah, that's out. a good idea. So that's a bit of a lower mm. cost option. And as you said, yeah, like look around and buy secondhand stuff. Yeah, it's um, great way of saving some money. In terms of power meters, well, there's some sort of smaller or lesser known brands which sell Definitely. some cheaper stuff. So mm. take a look. And I think that's a good option as well. In case, instead of you going to spend a load of money, and you might not like the shorter cranks, even though they yeah. the bike fitter might have said it that's what works for you, you might get it and you think, well, no, this isn't for me. Yeah, so. bike fit isn't like. You don't have to rigidly stick to that. No. It's sort of guidance on what's best for you. Yeah. Um, okay. Next question is from Christian. They say, which is faster, a £10,000 aero bike, brackets, riding alone, or a £1,500 bike, but with someone in front? They think, because no matter how aero the bike is, nothing is more important than having someone split the wind in front of you. Let's be honest, we all ride in a group ride. So um, does it actually make a difference? I feel like this is... I'm not really sure <laughs> about this question. Um, well, you're only going to go as fast as the person in front is riding, yeah. irrespective of your bike. Um, but I, I think I can kind of see what they're getting at. They're trying to say is, is the benefit of having a really fancy bike negated when you're sat behind someone because they're obviously mm. having creating a big load of shelter for you to ride behind. Now, obviously, irrespective of what bike you're riding, you're only going to be able to ride as fast as the person that's in front of you. Yeah. But the, I think it's fair to say at some point, everyone is going to ride in the wind and by themselves. If you're in a group, you're going to ride on the front for a certain point, or you're just going to ride your bike by yourself. So the most important thing that's going to slow you down is your body position rather than how expensive or fancy your mm. bike is. And the power that you have in your legs at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, that's, they're the two biggest yeah. factors that contribute to it. Yes, an aero bike is going to help you ride faster, but if you're in a really poor body position, that's going to have the it's biggest impact. Work, yeah. Get the position dialed, then spend your cash on a fancy bike. Or 
just find really fast people to go ride with. You just yeah. sit behind all the time. That's yeah. what I do. <laughs> right, on, next then. one in from Jonas. Yeah. Um, Mid-modern to high classic bikes are hard to improve with integrated co cockpits, aero wheels and so on. But what would you do to an entry level bike to improve it? And if you're on a budget, what would, you, what would be your first steps when you go in 50 pound steps? Okay. Um, well, I don't know if we're talking on a new entry level bike or a second hand one here. So if you've bought a second hand entry level bike, I'd say the first things to be investing your money and time on is to making sure that the bike is actually functioning and working correctly. So give it a good clean, spend some time maintaining the parts. If you can take any bearings apart, clean them, regrease them, that but way the bike's gonna last. That makes time. a big difference as well. Yeah, and then the things I would next move on to are getting the bike to fit you and make sure you've got a good position in terms of not only comfort, but aero. Because if you want to go fast, as we've just said, body position aero. is pretty crucial. Yeah. And if you need to adjust that, low cost versions of stems and bars, just get secondhand alloy parts. Mm. Really good. But I also think, I don't know if it, this is the right answer to your question, but yeah. tires. Yeah, mega I think upgrade. That's a really good upgrade that you can make, which can be done in 50 quid. And, oh, easy, and inner tubes as well. Yeah. Tires inner tubes are one of the first things that we'll always suggest upgrading. Yeah. That is a that good That is shout. the only thing that really touches the ground when you ride your yeah. bike. Yeah, I like that. Great suggestion. Um, next question is from Brian. They say, hey all. Hey I'm, all. I'm whack. <laughs> I'm wax curious. Oh, this is this is a question for you. This is you. You're, you're wax curious because you haven't waxed your chain yet. Yeah, true. Yeah, so this okay, could be I'll, a question for you. Um, I'm wax curious and I've been wondering, how do you clean a waxed chain in between hot wax applications? He says he rides dirty, muddy, gravel most, almost exclusively, and um, is imagining he needs something more than just like spraying the bike off. Well, not really. I would say, when you're washing your bike, you can clean all the chain with clean running water. It's going to wash out any grit and grime that's worked its way onto the chain. You can also use a really mild soap that's not going to damage the, the wax or break any of it down. And then it's literally just a case of drying it all the cloth. Pretty simple, eh? You do make that sound quite easy. It does sound a lot easier. In reality, <laughs> oh, gosh. there's a little bit of stuff to it. But um, yeah, all right, you can also add drip on wax too. Right. Well, it's fancy. Yeah, should we go on to our last question this week? Yeah, last question right. is in from Steve. Hi, Ollie and Alex. I just got a new road bike with flat top air handlebars and the bar tape doesn't go high enough on the bars when I get on the tops and half my hands is on the bar tape and half is on the carbon fiber. It's annoying. Any issues with me extending the bar tape up a few inches? Well, what would you say to that? Go for it or not? Well, I would just tape wherever you want to tape. Yeah. yeah. Why, why, why would you not? You? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it feels yeah. like. Um, because I guess. There's no set rules. No, and I guess if you have really wide handlebars, bar tape only comes in X and X length. It might not accommodate for. Well, your... I think, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I think what the, um, Steve is talking about is, so some aero bars have like, small little indents where the manufacturers assuming you're just going to stop the tape mm. and then it's carbon fiber across the top because it's more air in that way but when you are riding on the tops you are literally just holding a bit of carbon yeah. so you can wrap the tape a bit further up is it track riders on madison you used to tape all the way up to the stem yeah yeah so you, i mean you could do tops. that if you wanted yeah um there's but, no rules yeah there are no hard fast rules you do about you. This. yeah you do you hun you do you hun <laughs> <laughs> um Right, that's it. That's oh. all we've got time for in this week's Tech Clinic. Sorry if we haven't answered your question. Please do keep commenting it in the comments section down below. Be persistent and we'll get to it in the coming weeks. Right, right See there. See you in the next one. We're going to go tape our bars all the way to the stem. Cheerio. We don't mess about. <laughs>